This call is being recorded. Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is Good evening, good evening. This is Catherine. And we are kicking off this evening with step number seven. Well, we've been going through a journey these past several weeks. Uh, last week we were on five and six. And tonight we are entering into seven and eight. And then after that, next Tuesday, we will be going over the bylaws. I will send a sample email prior to next Tuesday. That way everyone can take a look at it and review it. And then we'll break it down on the live call. Then the following week, the last week, March 12th, we will be going over the 1023 application. I will send also prior to that Tuesday, a PDF document breaking down it'll have basically it's going to be the application itself and so when we're on the live call on the 12th i'll be going over how to fill out the application line by line and explaining what each um question and, and the appropriate answer should be so i'll send that app out prior to that way everyone can have an opportunity to look at it and then we can flow right into that and that would conclude the full eight weeks um, I once again I appreciate everyone that has participated, and um, even after these eight weeks, if there are questions, comments, concerns, I still will be available. Um, and for those that might be interested, I can assist them as far as marketing, as well as assisting with fundraising for the organization. So let's jump right in. Step number seven. Step seven is very important. It deals with review and edit. And what does that mean? A lot of times organizations will establish their nonprofit they get their 501c3 they have their board uh they're fulfilling their mission they're actively moving forward but they don't on a quarterly basis do benchmark checkups and assessments in order to maintain the effectiveness and the longevity of any organization it is essential to review the successes and the challenges a great way to assist organizations during the review and edit period is to have a tracking book and then the book that I highly recommend you can get a three ring binder and you can develop this book and it's called an organizational development log book I'm gonna say that again organizational development log book in this notebook what you want to do is to divide it into six different subdivisions number one daily action steps number two monthly goals met number three quarterly goals met, number four, obstacles and barriers in achieving your goals, number five, new partners acquired, and number six, new funding sources. I'm going to go through each one because each one is specific unto its own self. So number one, daily action steps. A lot of times organizations don't meet the mark or don't meet their goals because their daily action steps are not in sync to their long-term goals so the daily action steps will comprise of the following you would have meetings follow-up meetings appointments with potential sponsors appointments with potential um grant funders appointments with your volunteers training volunteers bringing on new team members staff members you want to make sure that every single day the organization is operating at functional capacity. Now, this does not mean that you have to have a full staff, a W-2 staff where you have, you know, members working. However, you do want to make sure that someone is operating and tracking and putting information in this logbook. That could be the secretary of the board, or it could be someone from the advisory team or it could be an individual that's coming on board as a volunteer that has really good tracking and documentation skills, right? So it really depends on the organization and the capacity of members that you already have or bringing on new individuals that can help with that particular uh, log book. Now, your monthly goals met. In other words, you're going to have six divisions in your notebook. Get a three ring binder, get the subdivisions separated out, and have six sections. In your monthly goals, at the end of that 30 day period, you want to assess the situation.
evaluation. You want to assess, did we hit our goal? Did we not hit our goal? Three, quarterly goals. Did your quarterly goals, did you hit those goals? Four, obstacles and barriers. What obstacles came in the way? What were the barriers? Here's the reason why it's important for section number four. And this is a section people don't dwell a lot of time on is the obstacles and barriers. They just go through it and then just keep moving, but they never take the time to pause and assess why did we have that obstacle? Why did we have that barrier, right? It's important to make sure that you are reviewing what hindered forward movement, what hindered those monthly goals. Take an assessment. I know myself personally, I'm always taking an assessment, not only of my business, but also of my nonprofit organization. What's working, what's not working. And we, we as leaders, we as founders, we cannot be intimidated about making change within our organization, even if that has to make change with the individual. You know, um, <clears throat> because a lot of times, and, and what I'm about to say is loyalty is very important. It is. But you can't be so loyal to the point that is damaging to the mission of the organization. If it is hindering the mission of the organization, you have to have those honest conversations with the individual saying, hey, you know what? I'm not saying for you not to be a part of the organization, but maybe this particular role is not a good fit for you. And let's have an honest conversation about that, right? So that way the organization continues to fulfill its mission and that person is now in an area that they are best suited. Number five, new partners acquired. So this is this blog book is something that's looked at every 30 days, but you're constantly putting daily action steps in the book. That's section one. Now, 30 days went by. Let's say a whole quarter went by. Section five, where it says new partners acquired, that's the section where you actually list the new partners. Let's say a month went by, a quarter went by, two quarters went by, and there's nothing in that section five with new partners. That is going to alarm you. That it should alarm any organization uh, because now you're you're not hitting one of the the goals. You're not bringing in new uh, blood, really. New partners, new life. That's really how it is. It brings a sense of uh, uh, urgency to the table when you have new people a part of what you're doing. And number six is new funding sources. Let's say a month, a quarter went by, and there were no no new money on the table for the organization. No new funding sources. No new sponsors. No new uh, business owners that that made a pledge. Uh, there were no community members that came on board that made a pledge. There was just nothing. It was a dead season. That says a lot as well. Now, I can tell you, if number one isn't being done, the daily action step, two, three, four, five, and six may not happen. And, and definitely, if one isn't happening, number four is going to be evident. One and number four. One is daily action steps. If that's not happening, if daily action steps is not happening, your number four category in your book, the obstacles and barriers, you're going to have a lot of obstacles and barriers. But then two, three, five, and six is going to look very scarce. You're not going to be hitting monthly goals. You're not going to be hitting quarterly goals. Don't even think about having new partners. That's not going to be a reality. And funding sources are not going to be there. So it all starts with number one, making sure we don't let a day go by and we're not uh, executing on our goals within our particular business model. Some people say, hey, you know, I'm going to take a day off. Now, I'm not saying, because see, Sunday's is family day. So I get it. We have to have those days. Sunday is it for me. Whatever that day is for you, make sure the days that you are on go mode, you give it your all. And you, and, and your team, it's not just you, the founder, the team just gives it their all. Because a lot of times that's why founders of organizations run themselves ragged and get so tired and burnt out because it's not a, a all hands on deck type of situation. Here's my thing from early on when I coach individuals, I want to make sure the founders, those that getting the organization off the ground, building the organization right from, from the very beginning. So you do not have to experience that burnout phase. A lot of people say you don't have to go through this phase. Some phases you don't have to go through if you build it right from the beginning. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to run into challenges or barriers. However, you don't, you don't have to put yourself in a position that you get so burnt out that you don't even want to do the mission anymore. You don't even want to be the founder anymore. I mean, it's many stories where individuals will, will say that, like, I am so mentally, emotionally drained. Founders will say, I, I, I don't even know if I can take another step. Don't allow that to be you. Make sure in the very beginning you have team players that's going to be all hands on deck, not just in title only, but also putting the action step forward. In this uh, particular chapter, it talks about list your short-term successes from phase one of your project. And then it also talks about list some of the challenges that you face during the first six months of your project. Here's the thing. Everyone's a different phase. Some in startup phase. 
some have already completed a project. So I'm going to talk from the standpoint, uh, from a perspective of one have already done a project in your community or within your organization. So now it says list some of the challenges you face. What I want you to think about right now, what were some of the challenges that you faced with your project? Was it that you did not have enough assistance? Was it that you did not meet uh, the goals that, that was desired from that particular project? Did you not get the buy-in from the community in which you were in? Because see, that's a big one. When you're doing a community project, a lot of times people don't get the buy-in from the community, so they don't get the results, they don't get the turnout um, that they were looking for. And so what I submit to everyone is that you have to identify the stakeholders in the community. When we talk about the logbook and the section uh, five in that book, new partners, some of those partners need to be the stakeholders of the community. Now, I'm not just talking about politicians. I'm talking about in the heartbeat of certain communities and certain zip codes, there's something called team captains or community leaders, everyday people. They don't have a, poly, a, a you know, political position, but they are a leader in their block. They are a leader in their neighborhood. Those are, are partners that you can acquire that's going to speak on behalf of the organization that's going to endorse the organization within the community. One of the activities in the book, it talks about after the first six months of implementing these steps, it's time to review your progress. Perhaps some adjustments may need to be, uh, may be required for forward movement. It talks about list adjustments that you may want to make. So this is what I want everyone to think about. Put in your mind the very last project, community event, activity that you had. The very last one, put that in your mind. Now I want you to put in your mind what adjustments do you think you need to make for the very next, right? What adjustments is needed? What adjustments is required? Tips for how to maintain the growth of your organization. Number one, review the organizational goals associated with the overall vision. This is where I see a lot of individuals stumble and fall when they're in go mode, which go mode is good, but you can't be so much in go mode that you're all over the place and you don't constantly look back at what the vision is to make sure everything you're doing from the daily action step to the quarterly goals, the monthly goals, new partners, new funding, does it all line up with the vision? Does it all line up? Because the thing is, you have to constantly realize that I just went through this myself. And so everything I'm teaching, I practice myself. I just reevaluated my own nonprofit organization, looking at our original mission. Back when we got started in 2002, we've been operating for 16 years now. So when you, you can imagine you operate for that long, you got to definitely check the pulse of the mission. Are we still on track? That's what I ask myself. Are we still on track? Are we fulfilling what we said we're going to fulfill? Number two, it says review organizational results from the data collection. What type of data have you collected? If you've done any kind of project, it doesn't matter how big or small. What type of data did you collect? Now, when we say data, what are we talking about? We're talking about names, telephone numbers, demographics, um, cultural background, because a lot of times some grant applications will ask how many people you serve were Caucasian, how many were African American, how many was Asian or other. It's important to collect that type of a data. So moving forward, if you've never developed a document that when you're having a community event for you to acquire that information, you want to start getting that data. So that way when you're filling out for a grant application or a corporate sponsor, they may not really ask those type of questions, but definitely grant applications want to know the demographics of people that you're serving and the percentage of the people that you're serving. So start keeping that in mind. If you're working in a school system, right, what kind of data can you collect from that? Well, let's say you have 15 students in your program. Let's say you're running an after school program at a school. You have 15 students. What type of data do you want to collect? Their academic grades. Have it been improved? Have it not been improved? I have a client, uh, she has a mentor program and she works in, uh, it's in one of the Baltimore City schools. And she took, she went through this whole course and I'm so proud of how her organization is excelling. They have a fundraising event coming up in March. Not only that, all of the girls that were in her mentor program when they first started, their grades was like one point something, two point something. And after they've been with her program over a three month period, when they got their next report card, she was able to successfully show how each one of them advanced in their academic grades. In other words, their GPA, you know, increased. It, it got better. And so that's, that's data, that's documentation 
that she can show to other funders and other individuals that saying, hey, since they've been with my program for a quarter, and she does the logbook, that was one of the things, because she went through the same course, you know, and sometimes with some of these um, principles may seem mundane, but they really are effective if you put it into practice. Um, number three, it says, uh, did you meet the goal from the community engagement project? Remember, early on when we were talking about community engagement, that is engaging the members of the community. If you're not engaging the members of the community, obviously the goal wasn't met, right? Now, when we talk about community, community also is not only a neighborhood. Community is also the targeted audience in who you're serving. So if you're doing a particular event or a workshop, let's say you're doing a workshop. I've worked with uh, some individuals. They were starting a program for um, women survivors of domestic violence, right? So in that community, it's women survivors, right? So in that community, let's say the objective was we're going to have a workshop every quarter. We're going to make sure we educate women in terms of once they come out of that abuse, how do they, you know, get their life on track? How do they bounce back from abuse? Whatever that might be. But community, I just wanted to clearly define it. Community is not only a neighborhood. Community is also the targeted audience in whom you're serving. So four says review of internal and external organizational structure. What does that mean? That means from top to bottom, your board of directors, your advisory team, your, your volunteers, your interns, anybody that you're in contract with. Maybe you have some contractual staff coming on board to facilitate workshops. Uh, maybe you have some partnerships, uh, you sh which you should, because in the logbook uh, section five talks about partners. Who are your partners? Maybe you need to reevaluate that. So you evaluating the internal, who's internally with the organization, and external would be the partners, the contractors with the organization. What are we reviewing? We're reviewing, is it a mutual benefit? You know, every organization should do something called an MOU agreement, stands for Memorandum of Understanding, basically is a document that um, states what both parties are committing to as they work together in a, in a cohesive way. So it's very important to make sure that, um, that that you have that in place. Some organizations go into partnership with, in relationships with other organizations and you don't have an MOU. And then sometimes people feel that they've gotten the burnt end of it. You can eliminate all of that with the MOU agreement. An MOU agreement states what the working relationship will be. And it doesn't have to be a super long document. It could be a one pager. It's simply saying, this is what my organization is gonna commit to. This is what your organization is gonna commit to do. We are still two independent organizations. However, we're coming together. Maybe you're coming together just for a standalone community project. It's one time a year and you're gonna partner on that. Uh, so that way you can leverage resources to make the event happen, right? Number five says, does the alliance, i.e. the network, contribute to the progression of the overall vision? So whoever's in your network, that was one of the steps in the book talking about the network. Who is in the network? Are they contributing to the overall vision or are they dead weight? I was at a function Sunday night and I was speaking um, about dead weight. A lot of times we have too much dead weight in our network. Sometimes we just have to cut the ties um, so that way the mission can be fulfilled, the overall vision can be fulfilled. Six says, review board of directors, management, and contributions to the overall vision. Um, the board of directors from when I started back in 02 are not the same board as, as today. Um, it's been a, a good stretch of time, over over a decade, right? So um, people serve their time, and I, and I appreciate that. The thing is, you never want to stretch someone, stretch someone into a position past the time, uh, and, and they need to, to, to transition. Um, I know in some cities they have people on particularly uh, downtown um in some of these uh institutions they have individuals sitting on boards and it's just past their time it's time for them to retire they no longer have that fire they no longer have fresh content fresh ideas that they contribute and bring to the table um that's one thing that i'm very cognizant about um i'm not afraid of change and i would say to any leader as a coach don't be afraid of change and nor allow anyone to put you in a box to make you feel that you act in what brand new that's a concept that does not apply in the business world um essentially you have to continue to move forward being respectful of all that contributed but you have to continue to move forward because if someone is in that circle the inner circle of the organization but they're not contributing they just hanging around that is dead weight. And sometimes people say, well, they just kind of hang around. They're not really doing anything. But actually, they are sucking up energy. They're sucking up space. They really are. And so we have to make sure 
that as we continue to move forward, we have everybody around us that's bringing energy to the table. Everybody around us, because energy can draw, it can help boost you, or it can, it, it can detract from you. So you have to be very mindful who you have in your space. There's a book called um, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, which I highly recommend any leader of any organization read. And it's a chapter in that book called The Law of the Inner Circle. The Law of the Inner Circle is talking about who do you have in your inner circle day to day. Now, remember that law book from step number seven that we were just talking about. It says, what are your daily action steps? Now, if your daily action step is consumed by dead weight around you, those action steps is not going to be accomplished. Because I'm telling you, if somebody's not in go mode, if somebody's not trying to accomplish goals for their own life, if they're around you, they're going to suck that energy because they're going to say, oh, man, you're doing too much or, you know, whatever negative comment they may want to make. And that's going to infiltrate your mind and it's going to detract you from your goals. So just continue to stay focused on where you are and what you're trying to do. Seven, it says identify new measurable goals that will aid in the forward movement of the uh, organization and the vision. I want to highlight and talk about that word measurable goal. Here's the thing. A lot of times we have lofty goals. We have great concepts. But is it measurable? Can we measure it? So like, let's go back to the example of the, the mental approach. So one measurable way that one of my clients used was academics. After one quarter, and she successfully did it. She took pictures of the report card. She put it on social media. She got a lot of responses around, like people was like, "Wow, they was just with you for one quarter, and already their grades shot up." And so that visual went a long way. So you have to have a measurable goal, and once you hit that measurable, goal, that's when you let people know about, "Wow, you know, after this quarter, we've worked with uh, X number of people, and now they have shifted in a positive direction." Now. Now, those girls, they're not at 3.0 yet, mind you. They're not there yet, but they're not at 1.0 anymore. So the thing is, it's not about showing the perfection. It's just about showing growth and progression. That's what it's about. Number eight, identify standards for evaluating your organization to include three top areas. Below expectations, meet expectations, and exceed expectations. Again, the criteria for evaluating your organization, it breaks down into three categories. Below expectations, meet expectations, and exceed expectations. Now, each of those categories can be used from top to bottom, from the board to the subcommittee, which is i.e. the advisory team, volunteers, as well as interns. Now, here's the thing that I like to talk about. Just because someone is volunteering or they're interning, that does not mean they have to be below expectations. Because if they're making a commitment to be a part of the team, they need to keep the expectations up there. They need to keep the expectations to a level in which um, is going to be parallel to the mission, to bring that forth. And so it's very, very important to make sure everybody knows, no matter what their title is, no matter what their position is, whether it's volunteer or not, that they are exceeding the expectations. The other thing is create a performance plan to include desired results, measurable goals, and standards for success. So when it talks about creating a performance plan, this is particularly for staff, right? Staff of the organization, board members of the organization, those that are a part of the operations of the organization, right? To make sure that they know up front, this, this is the desired results we're looking for, these are the measurable goals, and these are our standards. So once again, they need to know what the result is, is to be desired, what are the measurable goals, and what are the standards for success of that organization. Don't have anyone just coming on board and they have not gone through a training. Even if you put together a two to four hour training session with new board members, with new staff, with new volunteers and interns, it's very important so that way you can yield the results you're looking for. The other thing is get feedback about your organization's performance with each community engagement project from your targeted audience. This will ensure that the project being implemented is relevant and beneficial to the intended community. Too far often, uh, individuals have a project and they never take a survey. And surveys can be done in multiple ways. It can be brick and mortar, hard paper and pencil, you pass it out at the end and people filling it out, or it can be something electronic, it could be an electronic survey, you ask people to go to your website, they click on that link and they take the survey. So it's many ways it can be done. There's verbal surveys where you're talking to uh, your body of people, maybe 10 people that you've selected out of all that came and, and you ask them verbally, give me feedback, give me the pros, give me the cons. That's something I know I personally do with every event. 
even if I'm uh, facilitating an event for a client, I get feedback because feedback is very important for forward movement. There's a quote that says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. I'm going to say that again. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. So one of the things in order for our organization to be successful is that we have to be repetitious. We have to create those um, daily action steps, and we have to execute. We must manage that logbook, uh, making sure our daily action steps, monthly, quarterly, our goals are being met. Um, and then acknowledging and putting in the book whatever obstacles and barriers that may have been presented, what new partners have came together, as well as what new funding sources is on the table. And so now we're getting ready to transition into step number eight. Step number eight is a step that I truly love. It's called the ripple effect. The ripple effect talks about how do you build your organization decade to decade. How many can put in their mind or may have known someone or have heard of a story where a person would have established an organization, but unfortunately, after several years, they had to close the doors? whether it was due to lack of funding, lack of staff, lack of volunteers, lack of motivation, they closed their doors. The ripple effect is talking about 10 years from now, where do you wanna see your organization? How many people will your organization have served? And what will the data show on your program's effectiveness, right? It's so, so important to think about where you wanna be in the end. It's a quote that says, build with the end in mind. Build with the end in mind. In other words, everything that you do um, is no longer just carelessly flowing with an emotional feeling. Hey, you know what I saw on the news, such and such going on. I think we need to add that to our program. That's an emotional knee, knee jerk. I've seen too many organizations do that. Stay focused on what your platform is. Now, partner, if you see, if you definitely feel it's a need, another, um, uh, you know, service that you offer in the community, Identify another organization that's already doing that and partner, partner. And so, again, you don't want to swell yourself and your organization so wide to the point that you're not effective at all. And, you know, it's kind of like um, is a visual, uh, I guess, a picture. Imagine someone um, walking a tightrope, right? They're on that tightrope. They're trying to get across from the, the, the beginning when they walk onto the rope to the very end to the stable platform. But in that process, they're walking on that rope and they're trying to be so steady so they can get onto the other side. But imagine if they had a whole lot of weight on them or bags or something and they're trying to carry all of that to the other side. That's the same way it is when, when a person first starts a nonprofit organization. Sometimes they, you know, they have, they're carrying too much. They're swelling the organization too much and it's bound to fall because it's, it's not stable. It's not stable. And so I say, make sure you stay focused on the core pieces of your program. Even if it's something you do want to add on later, I'm not saying not to do that, but make sure your foundation is sure before you start adding a bunch of programs and services that you can't properly facilitate. The other thing is the effectiveness of any organization will be determined if the organization can arrive to a place of stability and duplicate its efforts decade to decade. There was another book that I had read and it was talking about the top 10 distinctions between the middle class and the millionaire. And one of those distinctions, it was talking about millionaires build decade to decade. For example, if someone were to say, hey, you know, or, or people, you know, going to a bank for a loan, the typical um, projection they ask for is a three to five year business plan. But when I read this book, it was talking about millionaires. They build decade to decade. They don't just have a three year to five year goals. It's, it's basically decade to decade to know and to measure out where their business should be. Organizations that maintain to the 10th year should have a clearly defined brand and message that the community has adopted. So from day one, you have to know in your mind, what is the brand? What is the message of the organization? Because I'm telling you, if that part is not clear, you will begin to add too much to the organization's plate and the brand and the message will get lost. There's no question about it, it's gonna get lost. And I have a term called uh, trim back the fat. Sometimes we have to trim back the fat because it's, it's not healthy, it's not, it's not uh, producing anything 
within the organization just by saying we got this long list of services, but there's no successes, there's no outcomes, there's no deliverables being met that, you know, it, it doesn't make an organization look better because you have tons of things going on. Um, it, is, it is the people from the community that will carry the name of the organization on for future generations. It is very important that during the first 10 years of the organization to build trust with the community your organization serves, the management team of the organization should possess integrity and focus on action steps that will support the broader vision of the organization. The organization should multiply in the following areas, volunteers, corporate sponsors, and residents from the community that brought uh, that brought into the vision, right? So that's very, very important. If you're not having new volunteers come on board, no new sponsors, and you have no one from the community talking about what you're doing, that equals a dead organization. And sometimes it's, 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 it's hard to put it that bluntly, but it's the truth. I, you know, one of the things from when I started in the very beginning, um, I was always staying in a state of recruiting, recruiting, recruiting every year and having other volunteers recruit others and they spread the word because the worst thing you could have is just the same jaded people year after year and they don't have the fire anymore. You got to keep injecting new energy into your organization. Now, I'm not saying get rid of the originals or the, uh, you know, ones that still around that, that have the fire. Keep them because that, that says a lot too by having someone around for longevity. Like I still have a board member from when we very first started, um, but their fire is there. Their fire didn't go out there. They still are participating in a meaningful way. The other thing is, will your organization become a household name? What type of impact and impression will you leave on the minds and hearts of the people that the organization serves? By the 10th year, the organization should be sustaining from earned income based on the information covered in step three. A ripple, let's talk about that. What is a ripple? A ripple is often presented with a visual depiction of water by being a small wave or series of waves on the surface of water, especially as caused by an object dropping into it or a slight breeze. Now let's talk about the word effect. What does that mean? It is a change that is a result or consequence of an action or other cause. So in other words, when we think about a ripple, you can even think about a body of water and you take a rock and you throw that rock into that water. You immediately start seeing ripples in the water. That is a visual depiction on how your organization should be. Anytime somebody is a part of your program, whether they're a board member, volunteer, intern, advisory team, uh, or if they're a community member, they should have been so impacted by the mission that's actively being carried out to the point that they want to now go into the community and they're talking about it. Hey, have you heard about so-and-so organization? This is their mission. This is what they do. Uh, this is where they're planning on going next year. Always have what we're doing now, but this is what we're doing next year. Follow us. Join us. Be part of the movement. It's always a movement. Yeah, what's y'all up to? Oh, we're working on the next thing. What's the next thing? Well, we about to launch a reading program, and, and we have partnerships with uh, the universities and community colleges, uh, students that's going to be participating. In other words, have those plans in place, right? Always be connecting, always be building. There's an activity in this step also. It says write a, a five-page description on your organization 10 years out from now. Describe the accomplishments, the clients you've served, and projects completed. Start the outline of your uh, ripple effect description below. Now, everyone has a copy of this, so you can either, you know, write it there or print it out and, and write it out, or you can just simply type it in a Microsoft Word. But this is something I'm encouraging everyone to do because when I do my follow up one on one conversations, I want you to share with me your ripple effect description of 10 years out. So I want you to think about 10 years out. As a matter of fact, even right now as I'm speaking, visualize where you see your organization 10 years out. How many people have you served? Who's on your board? How many is on your board? How many volunteers do you have? Okay. So now how many interns? All right. Now with that, 
How many individuals in the community have you served? The thing is what's so important, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that at the end, when you build with the end in mind, individuals will always respect the mission and the objective of the organization because now they see forward movement. Now they see structure, right? They see structure. No one wants to join something that's not structured. No one wants to join something that is here today and gone tomorrow. No one wants to participate in something like that. So one of the things I would impress upon everyone, write down what your what your uh ten year end game is, because that's going to dictate everything that you do for right now and over the next ten years. One of the things that I think also is important is by this weekend everyone get that three ring binder and set up their logbook. Again, there's six sections. Six sections. Now, in those six sections, you have to have someone to track that, or you can have two people working together with that logbook so it doesn't all fall on one person. But the big thing is, is to make sure that it's happening and that someone is monitoring what is going on. That is a huge thing. A lot of times that people miss is the monitoring of their organization. And when that's missed, unfortunately, opportunities, even financial opportunities are missed because now you have no tracking data. Now you have nothing to speak for. Now you have nothing to show. So what's super important is to make sure your data is above par, to make sure that you have the tools together to show individuals that's coming on board that you have everything in order. What is those tools? It's that logbook. Logbook is your tool to show internal people coming on board, volunteers, interns, staff members, contractual individuals. Hey, you know what? We have a tracking system in place. We have a logbook that's been tracking our progress, not only progress, barriers, and guess what? We also have solutions to those barriers and how we can move forward. So you want to identify someone that's going to be able to continue to keep that book up to par. And one of the biggest things I would just say to everybody, you know, March 1st is around the corner. March 1st is this Friday. I did my blog talk radio show this morning. And one of the things that I shared with individuals is that take the next three days, starting today, it's three days left of February. It's a three-day countdown to March 1st. Utilizing these next three days, to get your game plan together for March 1st, which is Friday. Do not wait till March 1st to put your game plan together or your action steps for execution, right? Action steps for execution. At the end of the day, if we don't have action steps for execution, we will not hit our goals in the month of March. Action steps. What are your action steps? Take a second to think about that. What are your action steps? Now that you thought about your action steps, who do you need on your team to make that a reality? Even if it's not someone necessarily on the board, who do you need to partner with? Who, how many volunteers do you need? You need to get that detail with what's going on so when you launch into March 1st, you're launching with a thought out plan, one with clarity, one with direction. The biggest thing I've seen is a barrier or obstacles with organizations. You're, you, when you recruit volunteers and interns or even team members that want to be on the board or advisory committee, no one wants to be a part of something that's in disarray uh, or not well put together. So one of the things that's very important that everyone needs to do the next three days, tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday, is to write out all of your action steps March 1st, through March 31st, each day, what are your goals? Each day, what are your action steps? Literally write out every day, this is what I need to make happen. These next three days is now or never. We cannot wait till March 1st. March 1st, we need to already know what our game plan is. So when March 1st hits, we're hitting the ground running. One of the other things that I would highly recommend also, check out Blog Talk Radio. Again, that's Blog Talk Radio. You can set up a blog talk page and an account 
and you can start your own podcast. Um, this is very, it's a, it's a very user-friendly um, system, but not only that, it can help set your organization apart because now you can build a virtual radio station and you can start interviewing potential business owners that want to be a sponsor, individuals that's going to come on board and make a pledge. Uh, now this is bringing legitimacy to your organization and is giving you a space uh, virtually and publicly at the same time through radio podcasts, it gives the organization a voice. It gives the organization a voice. Now, there is a free package that you don't have to pay anything. Up to 30 minutes is free. If you want it, a more robust package is $39 a month. But again, you can start off with the free package. You get up to 30 minutes to do a show. Um, you know, I, it's a lot of things that I would encourage the team to do. Also, as far as marketing, if you need to design something and you're working on a streamlined budget, go to canva.com. Again, that's canva.com. They have templates there for website, um, flyer development, posters, um, banner ads for Facebook and social media pages. Everything's there. You can even create your press kit there. Uh, they have some very user-friendly uh, templates, and you can change it and insert your own pictures and things of that nature. And speaking of pictures, and as we're talking about marketing, you want to make sure that you start getting good photos from your community project as well as your events. And what I mean by good photo, I'm not saying stage it, but I am saying you don't want a bunch of fuzzy pictures. You want to have something that's of quality, so when you're putting together your press kit, you have a nice quality picture, right? And it doesn't hurt to have a team photo um, or some team headshots. You can get something like that the way it'll go into the uh, press kit. To have some professional photos is not bad. But again, when you're doing your community uh, events, and I'm not saying you have to hire uh, a lot of expensive uh, photographers, but you know, a lot of times nowadays people use their phone and do they come, pictures come out very well. So whoever you're going to designate in that organization, just make sure that the pictures are clear and visible. On the same note, let's talk about videos. You want to start collecting some testimonial videos. Testimonial videos go a long way. Again, you do not have to hire a videographer. You can use your cell phone, a tablet, whatever device you have, and start getting some video testimonials of individuals saying, you know, since I've been a part of your program, this is how my life has changed. That's also considered data collection, getting those testimonials. And I know you can get it written. Sometimes people don't want to do video, but as many video testimonials as possible will go a long way. I, I believe in that. I'm telling you, since I started another component of my nonprofit organization, which is a tour called Speak Life Tour, we, the tour goes to the various different states and perform. And uh, we all we started collecting testimonial videos. And that's how I've been able to lock in even sponsors because I don't do the talking. I let the people do the talking. I let the people say, hey, since I've been a part of this program, this is how it's changed my life. Well, this is the impact I've seen in the community. I share very little. I let the sponsors hear them because if, they're, if we're saying they're our target audience and they're the individuals that we're serving, then the sponsors need to hear from them. They need to hear something that's true and something that's authentic. So that's one of the things I would definitely say. Um, make sure that you get testimonials because when it comes to marketing, you want to make sure it's something that people can connect to, people can relate to, um, as well as the visual representation of your organization online, such as the website. You know, you want to make sure that you have that up and running. You want to make sure you have quality photos. And the reason why I keep saying on quality photos, because, you know, sometimes you can go to an organization's page and it's just a, a, a lot of fuzzy photos that, that's not really clear. You can't really see what's going on. Um, you know, from the very beginning of my organization, I made sure, you know, that we captured certain moments, right? Um, because photos tell a story. Videos tell a story. You don't have to then do all this advocating for your program, saying how wonderful it is. Let the people do the talking. And then you just explain the operations. That's, that's what I do. I explain the operations of the organization, but then as far as the service itself, the mission itself, I let the people talk because they can speak of it passionately and they're, they are a neutral party as well. So that will win over any business owner to become a, to be a part of it um, because now they are hearing from the target audience, the people that you are serving, and now it's become real and it has become relevant 
to that business owner and now they have an aha moment saying, well, you know what, this is something I think I want to connect with. Again, when it comes to connection for potential sponsors, it's not about any business who's going to sponsor me. It's about what type of business would link up to my mission. What would make sense? So again, step seven and eight is very paramount to your organization. Seven is talking about doing those quarterly checkups. Eight is talking about building with the end in mind. Ten years out, where do you see your organization? And that is the activity that I want to talk to everybody about one-on-one. -on -one. At this time, I am going to open up the call to see if there are any questions, comments, or concerns on anything I've discussed thus far. It can Hello. be, um, hi, it could also be on any area, even if it's not something I discussed um, on any area of your organization. Yes, you can go ahead. Okay, this is Petey. Um, the blog talk, I missed that. Can you, um, can you give me that information again if you have yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. So it's blogtalkradio.com. Again, that's blogtalkradio.com. It's a really good tool. I highly encourage uh, you to go and set up an account. Again, they have a free account that allows you to do a radio show. Essentially, it's a podcast. And so okay. let's say, for example, um, like with mine, it's, it's blogtalkradio.com slash speak life tour. So it will be blogtalkradio.com slash the name of your organization. That will be like the link. Okay. And you can have people on that you interview. It could be people that you serve that's interviewing. And now what happens is you can, it saves all into the um, database of your blog talk radio show where you can send that link out to funders and they now can hear testimonials of people that, that have participated in the program and been successful in the program. But also, you can interview potential sponsors. That can go on a sponsorship packet and, hey, we want you on our show. We want you on our podcast radio show. Okay, and then you right. And list a listening audience as well, and that's a good selling point to lock in sponsors. Okay, that's sounds excellent. I was, um, my boss, I'm, I'm at work, so, but I got, I'm, I'm in here kind of like by myself, but I'm still doing work. And, um, yeah. As soon as that part came up, he called on the phone, and I was like, man, shoot, I was trying to hear that. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Blog Talk Radio, I mean, it really will help um, shift uh, and, and set apart your organization because now, you know, for your organization to say, hey, we have a radio show. And, you know, right. podcasts have really become popular now. Podcasts is a really popular thing. So... It doesn't have to be that you're not on like the mainstream radio station at a 92Q or something like that. Right. Uh, podcast is very popular. Like when you go on Blog Talk Radio Show, I mean, I'm sorry, blogtalkradio.com, you can actually see the other shows that's already um, in that network. And so it, it brings about great credibility um, to who you're going to be working with, you know, in terms of the um, blog talk. And the other thing is you can create an intro and an outro jingle mm -hmm. um before the, show, before the show even starts so you can make it official okay cool awesome mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and so um i did want to have a one-on-one -on -one with you when do you think that time will be good um just you give me a, a time and i just have to you know make it make myself available because i'm literally on call 24 7 and anything pop up but i you know yeah. Time aside. Okay. Well, what about Thursday? Okay. What time? Um. What about a, a, a lunch break time, or would that not work? Anytime. You can just give me a time, and I'll um. Okay. So let's so let's say Thursday at twelve noon. Okay. 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 So I'm gonna have you down for one on one for Thursday, and I'm going to connect with everyone else to get their one-on-one -on -one schedule. Okay. And you'll call me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'll call you directly on your line Thursday at 12 noon. Okay. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you have a great night. That concludes Chapter 7 and 8. And then next week, we will be going over bylaws, so I'm going to be emailing out templates for that. And that following Tuesday, the 12th, we will be specifically going over the 1023 application. I'll be sharing how to fill out the online easy as well as how to submit it 
how to create the account online. Um, so that will be um, all the components to everything that, you know, one would need to get the foundation off the ground. Okay, awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a great night. Too. Bye.